It's around midnight, July 10th, 2001, a winter's night in the Sydney suburb of North Ryde. 20 year old Seth Gonzalez runs out of his family home in a panic and crosses to his neighbour's home, John Atanium. Help me! Help me! My family's been killed! It came as quite a shock. I mean, it was 11.30 at night, and here, young Seth was telling me that his whole family were dead. A few houses away, Shay Henley heard the commotion and comes out to investigate. Seth was really distraught. I tried calming him down, but the entire time, he just kept screaming, Mama, Papa, as he laid beside their bodies. Shay takes control of the hysterical Seth and takes him outside, where John is waiting for help to arrive. From there, I rung up Triple O and stayed on the line until I heard the sirens. A police sergeant and a senior ambulance paramedic finally arrive with others. They enter the darkened house. Upon entering, they see the body of Teddy Gonzalez, Seth's father, lying motionless on the floor mat. I checked for any signs of life. There was nothing indicating that he was still alive. There were numerous stab wounds to his neck, chest, back and abdomen. They move quietly into the darkened living room where the torchlight outlined the bloody figure of Teddy's wife, Loiva, lying on the floor. There were multiple stab wounds and cuts to her face, neck, chest and abdomen. Her windpipe was completely transected in the attack. Then upstairs, they come upon the battered body of 18-year-old Claudine, Seth's sister, lying curled up in a pool of blood. Again, it was a nasty sight. She had stab wounds in the abdominal area. Her head was dented and there was a lot of blood. There were also signs that she had, was even perhaps strangled to death. Forensics descend on the house and scrounge for any physical evidence they can find. It was certainly strange. In Seth's room and the spare rooms, I remember the doors to the cupboards were open. Everything inside the cupboard was neatly in place and folded. It actually looked like part of the shop. It was that neat. You would think that if they wanted money or valuables, it would make more of a mess. Next to Teddy's body lay his car keys and his briefcase with his papers spilled out. His blood was spilled on the ceramic tiles and from this there were signs of a struggle before he met his demise. The movement of blood and the bloodstained footprints were all an indication that he struggled with the attacker. After lifting the briefcase, the forensic people found blood underneath. Our forensic evidence showed us that something happened to the suitcase after the killing. After the struggle, after Teddy Gonzalez was confirmed to be dead. That was when the movement of the suitcase occurred. In a similar fashion, Teddy Gonzalez's wife, Loiba, also had her contents of her handbag spilled, with blood underneath. Then we walked down the hallway to the kitchen. There were some words that were starkly different to everything else. It wrote, fuck off Asians, KKK. Like here we have a triple murder and then this graffiti. It just wasn't connecting. A few days later, Seth was pulled in to reenact how he found the bodies. Seth tells police that he left his father's office in the late afternoon and drove over to the North Ride home, pulling into the garage at 6pm. Seth says that because it was raining, he stayed in his car, talking to his friend on the phone. He called the home phone, but when no one answered, he drove off. He drove to see a friend, but couldn't locate his new home. 
He instead drove off to meet with another friend that he had arranged to meet, and together they drove off to the city. He arrived home at 11.30 p.m. Unbeknownst to Seth, the police had recovered evidence from Marilla Pavone, a client of Teddy Gonzalez, that she saw Seth's car in the carport at 4.15 to 4.30. Seth lied to the investigation team. Police later uncovered that there were discrepancies between what Seth and the friend he was meeting that night, Sam DeChillo, said. Seth's mobile phone records also concluded that he didn't talk to any friend on the phone at the time he stated. At this point, we were just shocked. All the evidence pointed towards Seth. I mean, why would he lie, when he would otherwise clearly be the victim? A few days later, Emily, Seth's aunt, released information that was vital towards the crime investigation. She said that while she did see Seth's car parked in a carport, she also saw the shadow of a man moving around in the house. After realizing this piece of information, an undercover crime investigation was established and the mission was to get close to Seth. It seems that Seth was performing poorly at Macquarie University. He would frequently falsify his marks and on more than one occasion was reported absent on important exam dates. His parents held high expectations for him and when they found out that he was performing poorly, they threatened to take away his car. We recognize this as one of the several factors for the murder, but this wasn't just a sudden thing. There were several factors which actually led up to the murder. This included the accumulation of stress as well as humiliation and as well as the fact that his parents' standards were set too high to which he could not achieve them. This resulted in the murder. Claudine was the favorite child of the two. It was revealed that at a family gathering one night, she told her parents that Seth wet the bed. At the age of 20, wetting the bed was considered a disgrace by the family. With all the evidence pointing towards Seth, he was summoned at the Supreme Court and sentenced to lifetime imprisonment for the murder of Teddy Gonzalez, Loiva Josephine and sister Claudine. Seth Gonzalez was finally exposed for what he was, a ruthless and deceitful man who felt nothing for anyone but himself.